What's going on, everyone? Welcome into another edition of the 415ers podcast on the Odyssey Sports Podcast Network. Coming at you twice a week here in the offseason. That's Mark Grandy. I'm Evan Giddings. Please download the 415ers on the Odyssey app. Check us out wherever you download your podcast from. Uh, we got some updates from a new defensive coordinator in San Francisco, Mark. We're going to take a look a little bit deeper into the schedule and also, of course, talk about some of the reasons why we believe and maybe why we also mm. want to hesitate a bit on what we've seen from the 49ers this offseason heading into, of course, 2023. But before we do so, how you doing? I'm doing well. Uh, yeah, it was a tough ending for uh, a Bay Area team this weekend. Of course, the Golden State Warriors uh, are over with. I know uh, baseball season is, is really just beginning, but with the end of basketball season, I can't help but feel like we're uh, a step closer to football. So I'm sad about the Warriors. Uh, I'm, I'm sad that it ended uh, the way it did, especially to the Lakers. Um, but it does get me a little bit more excited for football season. I know we're really not that much closer. It just kind of feels mentally to me. Um, of course, before football starts, you have to have basketball end. And now we have that at least in the Bay Area. So it feels like we're, we're inching closer to football, which excites me. But uh, overall, I'm doing well, Evan. How, how are you? I'm good. And that, that's a great point. Like, I wonder where for everyone the football season officially starts kind of deal. I know for a lot of people it's 365 and that's understandable because it seems like it never stops. And the carousel, of course, that keeps this podcast moving. We are very much appreciative of. <laughs> but for everyone, OK, like, am I done? Obviously, at the end of the regular season or wherever your, your team finishes in the playoffs. But then where do you pick back up? I think that's that's a really interesting question. And if anyone would like to let us know. We are more than happy to discuss it. Uh, but what we're going to be leading off today with, Mark, is the new D.C. Steve Wilkes came over from Carolina this offseason, of course, replacing D'Amico Ryans, who takes the head coaching job with the Houston Texans. And this was one of the first times we had heard him publicly speak, was available to the media and the press as recording on Monday here, for those of you listening on Tuesday. And you know, was asked kind of a myriad of things about how he's going to approach this defense, maybe some of his um, additions, and a couple of things that, that caught my arm are, one, you know, the fact that he's admitting, hey, like, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, basically. Hmm. You're inheriting the number one offense as far as points per game and yards allowed per game are concerned, so you probably don't need to tinker a whole lot. Uh, but also the the foundation that was agreed upon with Shanahan, he's going to try and maintain. Uh, there's a couple of adjustments he did reference a little bit, which we can dig into. But the other part that he discussed was the fact that his guy from Carolina, Isaiah Oliver, kind of comes in as the expected nickel cornerback. And so we were discussing before the pod, you know, with 19 of 22 guys from last year coming back as starters, uh, where were the openings? We, we discussed the kicker. You know, we discussed uh, kind of the nickel spot. Uh, but Steve Wilkes gave us some clarity on where those position battles might be happening based on who the starters were at the end of last season. Yeah, it's one of the key spots that we didn't really have an answer to yet was nickel corner. And it's a really important spot. The 49ers and really every team across the NFL in today's day and age where teams just pass so much. Everyone plays a lot of nickel corner. I know we're going to kind of run through how the team starting lineup might look different now that we have most of the roster kind of sorted out. How many different starters should you expect this year to next year? I know technically you can you know include three starting linebackers, uh, which some teams do, a lot of teams do, but more often than not, the 49ers start three corners and just two linebackers because they play nickel so much. Um, now, you know, they're going to have three linebacker sets. They're going to have three cornerback sets, five defensive back sets. That's why that corner is known as the nickel corner, the fifth defensive back uh, in a, you know, coverage. Um, but that's a really, really important spot. I say all that to say that he's basically a starter for this 49ers defense. And we got a little bit of, as you're saying, clarity from Steve Wilkes, who as meeting with the media says Oliver is someone that I had the opportunity to go against being in that division. We didn't exactly know what was going to happen in free agency with Jimmy Ward, of course, who left to go to the Houston Texans. And then when that didn't happen, we wanted to make sure that we got the best nickel in free agency. And that's what we went out and did. So I'm excited 
about Isaiah Oliver is what new defensive coordinator Steve Wilkes said about him. So it seemed pretty clear, Evan, the 49ers were thinking, all right, if we can get Jimmy Ward back, that would be great. He was great as a nickel last year. We are already know what he can do as a safety. But if we can't, well, let's go out and get the best guy we possibly can to fill that position. So it seems to me, at least, Evan, that was the plan from the get-go, that they expect Isaiah Oliver to be starting quality at that position. And then what does it mean for the rest of the defense? We can get into that. Um, but I think it does give me a little bit of, I don't know, encouragement. It makes me feel a little bit better about the plan for the 49ers defensively that they went out and got what they think is one of, if not the best, nickel corner guys. And they expect him just to slot in and fill that role. It leaves all the other depth and all the other pieces to fill in some holes elsewhere. Yeah, so Isaiah Oliver from Atlanta, uh, the guy I was referring to earlier, Miles Hartsfield, comes from Carolina with Steve Wilkes. But as far as the defense is concerned, that 4-3 that setup, really the only other spot to me, Mark, that was kind of open in that defense that they run primarily. I mean, you can occasionally put a, a slot a third linebacker in there, you know, whether it's Demetrius Flanagan Fowles, Oren Burks, uh, new draft D, D winners, Whoever else is going to be that that third linebacker is certainly up for grabs. Um, but the nickel the nickelback is very important, and we saw Jimmy Ward man that position well last year. The, the really the only other position that, in my opinion, Mark on defense, and that Steve Wilkes is going to have to, I guess, not put up for grabs, but make some evaluation on, would be the the other defensive end spot. And Drake Jackson probably has the the short path to that at this point. Um, but he referenced specifically in his, in his press conference the want to play with speed, and Jackson can add that. That's also a reason like why you mentioned two linebackers is primarily what they play with. Dre Greenlaw, Fred Warner, two of the fastest downhill and sideline to sideline linebackers in football. Um, and he discussed, Wilkes did the fact that he wants to blitz with those guys a lot more this year. So... You know, if you're looking at defensive end, you're looking at nickelback, it does appear like there is more, uh, or I should say, less fog from the defense and more clarity coming into the picture as as far as what Wilkes wants to do. Uh, but at the end of the day, I, I don't expect him to tinker with this a whole lot. The question to me more is if and when they do face adversity, if and when teams are able to put points up against them, how do you adjust more schematically, uh, of course, than you know, utilizing your roster because he inherits the, the best in football, frankly. Yeah, no, I mean, there's a ton of talent on both sides of the football, but specifically on defense, you're right. The left defensive end spot is something to keep an eye on throughout camp. I think the 49ers are hoping we'll see how it actually works out, but I imagine they're hoping it is Drake Jackson. He had a pretty good start to the year last year, Evan, if you remember, but there were a few times down the stretch where he was a healthy inactive. He wasn't even active on game days, and it's not because of an injury. The 49ers wanted depth elsewhere, and you know they, they activated a number of defensive linemen above him. So it wasn't the best close to his rookie year, but you're right. I mean, he's got to be the most athletic, uh, quick athletic freak the 49ers have as a defensive end other than of course the best defender in football in Nick Bosa um you know no one's going to be better than him at those sorts of things but it does seem pretty clear to me that Drake Jackson is the next most athletic guy that they have I mean the other options are Kerry Hyder Jr. who of course we know he's been with the 49ers for multiple years and multiple stints now um, on the outside, you have a couple of guys you just brought in, and Austin Bryant and Cleveland Farrell as well. Those are the guys competing for that spot. But if I had to handicap it, I would I would put Drake Jackson as the clear favorite to be that starter week one at left defensive end. And that's certainly the hope for the 49ers. You spent your highest overall pick. It was a second-round pick, but your highest overall pick on him in 2022. You hope going into his sophomore year, that he is a starter and you can rely on him to play the majority of snaps opposite Nick Bosa. Now, the other one that I think is interesting, you mentioned left defensive end uh, in addition uh, to the the other spot, the nickel corner spot uh, being one of question. The other one I have questions on, Evan, 
uh, is just the second corner because there are a few options at that spot as well. I mean, Charvarius Ward is far and away the best corner on this team, and he's going to play one spot, most likely on the left side. That's where he prefers. But where is the second starter coming from? If you believe in what happened last year, it seems likely that D'Almador Lenore is going to be that guy. Of course, he took over when there was an injury in the secondary last year. Um, and he didn't do great, but but he wasn't bad. The other options there are Ambry Thomas, who's in the same draft class as D'Almador Lenore. Also, Samuel Womack, who was a rookie last year. And there was a lot of talk about him in the preseason and early in the season. And then I know Quantrez Knight is a, a name that got a lot of run last year in the preseason and is, is probably going to have a bit of a hype train coming for him this offseason as well. I know there are a lot of people out there that really like him. Um, but that's another spot I'll be keeping an eye on. I think similar to Drake Jackson, Evan, if I were to handicap it, I'd, I'd say Diamador Lenore is a pretty high favorite. But it, it's not a, a done deal by any stretch of the imagination. If, if one of those guys that I mentioned has a fantastic offseason and really impresses, they could certainly be the team starting number two corner. Well, and that's why, Mark, I think that the comments that Steve Wilkes made about some slight adjustments to the defense were interesting to hear because obviously uh, you know, D'Amico Ryans, before him Robert Sala, have created a dominant unit on defense and there hasn't needed to be much adjustment. But one thing that caught my eye or ear, I should say, is the fact mm -hmm. that not in addition to wanting to blitz more to use light, utilize the speed of Fred Warren and Dre Greenlaw was also playing more man. And the 49ers are a team that because of their speed are able to play, you know, not, not predominantly, but able to play a lot of zone uh, and use it to their advantage. But playing more man uh, is something that I feel like, maybe throughout the regular season isn't something that is extremely noticeable. There's a lot of offenses that d depending on your roster, your personnel, uh, you can get away with playing either and you just can play to your strengths. You impose your will, but in the playoffs later down the stretch of the season, how are you able to adjust your de defense to what opposing offenses like to do? And, I know that Charverius Ward coming over from Kansas City, Steve Spagnola likes to play a lot of man. Um, he's a, he, he can play press. I question if Diamador Lenore, along with other of those corners, can do so. I think that's a big reason why we're seeing Isaiah Oliver as the preferred nickelback for Steve Wilkes, because he can play man. Um, that's something where I, I see that potential adjustment being valuable down the stretch of a season why I think wants why I think he wants to emphasize that uh, because when you have a defensive line along with blitzers that can get to the quarterback quickly if you are able to play man if you're able to get up and press you limit the amount of time maybe not beyond three or four seconds in which a wide receiver can get open but you if you get enough time for your guys to get to the quarterback uh, that can be a very effective means to to you know put an opposing offense behind the sticks. Uh, so I think Steve Wilkes is maybe not trying to put his fingerprints all over this defense, but sees where he can maybe tinker with a little bit. The only place I question that is, of course, you need the personnel to play man. And I think that's going to depend mostly on how much they can get to the quarterback and how good that defensive line is. The addition of Hargrave to go along with Bosa and Armstead and hopefully where Jackson can help as more of a speed rusher, I think can be a big boost for that. Uh, but I, I was interested and, um, well, not, not necessarily surprised, but you know, I was happy to hear that he wants to introduce more man to this 49ers defense, which to me can play it uh, and is athletic enough to do so. Yeah, and I think one thing that the 49ers have that is benefiting them, obviously a new defensive coordinator coming in, but something you mentioned off the top, uh, I mean, Kyle Shanahan's goal was to hire someone who, you know, enjoys, prefers the scheme and, you know, the the four three that they already employ and play and use. And that's the case with Steve Wilkes. But on top of that, it's that this is, for the most part, the same group as last year. I mean, we're, we're talking about some of the potential changes in the starting lineups. I mean, defensively, there, there's a, at times it kind of depends exactly what time you're referring to when you're looking at the starting lineup from last year. But let's say at the end of the season, Drake Jackson really wasn't starting. It was more so Samson Ebukam. So that left defensive end spot, that's going to be a new starter. 
Uh, one of the defensive tackles, Javon Hargrave, that's going to be a new starter. You have Armstead, you have Bosa, you have Dre Greenlaw, you have Fred Warner, you have Charvarius Ward, you have Talanoa Hufanga, you have Deshaun Gibson, and most likely you have Diamador Lenore, who at the end of the year was the team's starter. Of course, early in the year it was Emmanuel Mosley, but late in the year it was uh, it, it was Diamador Lenore for the 49ers. So really you have maybe a new starter at left defensive end, maybe a new or most likely a new starter, very likely a new starter on the defensive uh, line at defensive tackle spot next to Eric Armstead and Javon Hargrave. And then you have a new starter at nickel, most likely with Isaiah Oliver. But pretty much everywhere else, Evan, you have the same guys on one of the best defenses from last year. So I, I'm with you. Steve Wilkes has the ability to make some minor changes here and there. And for the most part, he has an extremely talented, extremely physical and extremely cohesive group that has already had success together. It should make some of the, those changes a little bit easier to digest and swallow. 